never a million dollars. If you get, get a million dollar contract, guess how much money you have? You have four hundred and thirty five thousand yeah. dollars. That's it. That's yeah. all you have in a million dollars. So don't when somebody says I signed a million dollar contract, no, you have four hundred and thirty five million dollars. Then on top of that, you have to pay somebody to protect that four hundred and thirty five million dollars. That that job right there is thirty six thousand dollars a quarter. Okay? These are big time jobs that people have to pay for in order to keep that money. Nobody right. talks about that. All they right. hear about is the money that they're getting. And luckily, luckily I had a black man, my father, to instruct me on that. Because once I got to a certain point, I thought just like some of these young brothers do. Hey, you can't tell me shit. I got my own money. I got my own thing going. There's nothing you can tell me. I've graduated. I've done all that shit. At the end of the day, you have nothing if you don't know what you come, what you bring into the table, and what you can save with it. People are not saving that bottom line, and they're not investing their money properly. Black man, invest your money, get your nose into the stock market, and find out what's going on. That's all I got to say. Hey, y'all have a blessed day, man. Hey, hey, that's a great comment. So I appreciate your opinion, Mister Mister Jones. You, you, you spoke very well. Are you, you spoke- single? Spoke very well. Uh, uh, I don't know. Be careful. Just because he spoke well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just because he spoke be well. What was the word he used? A question. The, <laughs> conversating. That threw me off right there. The member, the member. Hey, I, I, I want to find him as my accountant right there. Like, I can't say worse. Nah, huh? You can't say worse. No, I can't say worse. She's trying to say wash. Yeah. She oh. puts an R in it every time. Okay. Yeah. It's a St. Louis thing. It is. Thank you. <laughs> That's because you got something on your tongue when you're trying to speak. We're going to take a quick break and come right back. And hopefully we gave uh, Lou Dix a twinkle eyes appeal. And no, why him. me? You just said something was on her tongue. Yeah, but Johnny I Max said is funny and comical. Come to you. you be quiet. You got two not. things on your tongue. Be quiet. I think it's funny. We're going to take a break. Hilarious. See how yours wasn't funny? <laughs> Didn't have to be. That was called Truth. Foxhole. Capital Sirius T. XM 98. It's Foxhole Radio. Uncensored. Sirius XM 98. Hey, this is Lewis Dixon. The NFL is back, and Bud Light is giving thirsty football fans the ultimate NFL experiences they want all season long. You can win trips to the 2012 NFL Draft, the 2012 Pro Bowl, season tickets to your favorite team, even a trip to Super Bowl 46 and the Bud Light Hotel. Entering is easy. Just look for the ultimate fan experience icon on special packs of Bud Light and on Bud Light displays. Snap a picture of it with your phone and send the pic to 95871, and you've entered into the Bud Light Ultimate Fan Experience. Snap, send, and you could win. Learn more at Facebook.com slash Bud Light, the favorite beer of NFL fans and official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents except California. Look, it ends at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time on January 15th, 2012. To play, send a photo of Bud Light snap tag on signs at retail locations to snap at BudLight.com. Or for AT&T, Verizon, Wireless, or Alltel customers, text to 95871. Message and data rates may apply. See official rules at BudLight.com slash UltimateFan. Void with prohibited, 2011 Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light, Beer, St. Louis, Missouri, and what a World Series. Yo, yeah, without Fox a doubt. Soul, Sirius XM 98. It's going to be a very touchy subject right now, dealing with the children. <laughs> uh, we know Lou Dix is about to get animated, so we just heavily sedated him with some profile. <laughs> Can we get some more? <laughs> we just petitioned Dr. Conrad Murray to give us a little, a little sample, a little sample uh, uh, juice that we can give to Lou Dix. Um, We're going to talk about the governor signs the PTA's anti-bullying bill, and it was signed a few weeks ago. Yeah, so it was signed a few weeks mind. ago. I don't know when it came into play. October tenth. Yeah, because you know Jay Brown just signed something else, and everybody's excited. Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm that, you know. Uh, uh, Brittany, read read that uh, thing because my comment's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. Uh, well, basically, Governor Jerry Brown announced um, that he has signed a crucial legislation to protect students from bullying and harassment. Uh, the California State PTA sponsored the bill AB one one five six, which was proposed by Assembly Member Mike Eng. Yeah, maybe part of English. Um, so in signing the legislation sponsored by the PTA, the governor uh, has laid the groundwork for making the schools safer for students and teachers. 
and uh, which they believe is a real achievement for all the students of, of California because bullying is a serious issue at home and in school, and uh, the legislation takes important steps to reduce it. Now, Lou Diggs, you are a proud parent of two, but they're not proud of you, but you're proud of them. Uh, how do you feel about the government stepping in and doing anything to protect children from getting bullied by other children? Well, first thing you have to do is you have to – you have to teach your kid at home how to deal with certain things. I mean, you, you're going to have – you see certain examples all the time, and that's the teaching time. If you see another kid or a kid saying something, then you can talk to your kid and say, listen, that wasn't cool. You know that will probably happen to you, and how are you going to handle that? Like my kid went to a mostly all-white school. Oh. So the first thing you do as a parent is you make your presence up there. First thing I did was walk around campus with my son every day. Holding his hand. Because – no, not holding his hand, but playing catch with him, you know, just making sure they knew he had a father. Who was big? Who was that? And what that does, it cuts the kids down for teasing. Yeah, because you're bigger than any third grader or oh, second yeah. grader. You're big. You're huge. You walk around, and and that allows your son to deal with any bullying because my dad's coming. And it's all about bullying. Is all about who's protecting you because I'm about to bully you. So, like you know, I'm, I've never been bullied. I never really bullied anybody. You've never. Oh, come on. I've never been bullied. You, no, I'm saying that you've never bullied. I've someone. never bullied anybody. I, I don't do that. I only fight. I don't think Johnny Mac would have. I only anybody. fight when I if I'm cornered. If, I, if it's absolutely necessary, or if you say something about my mother, those three things would get your ass whooped twenty five times. I saw you fight for now one of those reasons. What did you see me fight at? Huh? What was hmm. that? Huh? And what's oh. that? Hey, <laughs> we get into that later. Hey, I'm sorry about that. It sounded like it was some bullying going on there. <laughs> you no, know, somebody did something to me and I reacted. You know, I think Sigmund Freud says for every action there's a reaction. We get into that later. So my thing is like, here's my thing. On, here's my take on it. I think it was Freud though. I think it was Freud. Okay. I think it was. Might All have right. been. Might, might have been. What's the dude? Hey, we'll take it. Might it have been. Isaac. Uh, might have I been know. I guess wasn't. Isaac Newton. Yeah, Isaac Newton. I couldn't think. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, that's what that's what I love about Johnny Mac. The other Johnny Mac with the high pitched voice. He always fi- he always the, figures it out, right? He figured out. Yeah, the, other, <laughs> the second Johnny Mac is off the chain. You know? But here's my thing. You know, saying we all have children and go to school. And, uh, and my uh, uh, my children at the time were to uh, 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 urban community uh, school up in Richmond, California, and I don't really call this bullying. You know, uh, uh, to say my son is not, you know, is, is on a baseball team and he's not really that good. And the other 14 kids were better than him. They called him, sorry, uh, you can't play, blah, blah, blah. To me, that's not bullying. It's up for my son. I told my son to take up. My, my mother taught me if somebody hit you, hit him back. My father taught me if they get too close to you, hit him first. So I, I was taught to defend myself or be an aggressive in a situation. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that children should fight, but let's be honest. Kids do that. Kids are crucial. Kids are brutal. Uh, if, 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 if you go to school, you got a big fat mama, every child in that school is going to tease your big fat mama. You know that's going to happen. My mother was a third grade teacher. She was a big fat woman, but we had a long ass station wagon because it was 10 <laughs> kids. I said, no, nah, mama, I'm going to walk to school because when you drop me off, they be killing me about this goddamn green station wagon. I got to accept that. Or oh, that's what made me funny or oh, what make me fight. Those, to me, is things that happens every day as a child. I don't think our government or adults, I ain't going to say our government, I don't think adults should be punishing or intervening with other children. Because, you, you know, as kids, I, I, can, I can punch Jesse in the face, and Jesse can punch me in the back in the face, and we walk home, we walk home from school together. We know that. Right. But there are instances, Johnny Mac, where you will have... When they call you tiny titties, you just kept it moving. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. But, but so so how, <laughs> how do you feel about... I mean, I just think that the parents or the government should not be involved in... Well, call it playing the dozens. That's what happens. Children do that. Yeah, they do. You, you can't stop that. We can't stop what's been going on. It's not gonna. It's not gonna stop. I'm sorry. The kid is gonna act how they want to act at school, regardless. I feel like it starts with the parenting at home. Not only how to teach your child to deal with bullying, but teaching your child to not be a bullier. For one, right. Like it should start with that parent and that little child first of all. Right. So. So, but uh, so if your child, uh, little Zoe, was getting bullied. If she was getting bullied at school first, I would tell her to go tell the teacher. Like, if it comes to, like, I tell her this now because she always comes home from school. Tell her, oh, such and such pushed me. I'm like, did you tell the teacher? She said, yeah. And I asked her if they do it again, then you push them back. If she don't stop, if she won't try to fight you, fight her back. I, that's what I'm saying. So, so, but now they got it like uh, 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 they can be punished. That child that did the first pushing can be kicked out of school, suspended, or, or no longer allowed in that school. So, to me, you fucking up the second child. Yeah, but what what's happening now? You can't with, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, but what's happening now is 
creating a safe environment is what's important. Because right now, these schools, the, the environment is not safe. When we were growing up, very seldom you heard a kid killing himself or dying from bullying. We're at a point now where kids are so sensitive and so unsure and so, I don't want to use the word weak, but they're not, they don't have the same strength we had where they say get over it. That's now true. parents, TV, everybody says enjoy the emotion. Deal with the emotion. They they have medicine for every emotion. That's now. true too. So if I'm the so kid doesn't if the I kid doesn't if the kid doesn't have yeah. that emotional outburst, then I can't sell them the medicine. They, I remember I was a kid. I was I was a hyper child, and they wanted to give me this. Was it how you say it? Ritalin. Yeah. Ritalin for to, ADD. They to, had it back then. Yeah, they had. They been having that shit. Yeah, but it was not as yeah. it wasn't as public like now. They have commercial. Yeah, now they, everybody every has. Day. Yeah, now they just give it to you for any reason. But they wanted to give me this medication to uh, 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 they say to slow me down because I was a hyper child. Mm -hmm. And my mother's like, no. She said we want him to slow him down like a normal child. My mom said, no, that's his norm. That's normal for him. I think but my Zoe is like that. I really believe she Zoe. Is, she if, is if I active. were to take her somewhere, they would say she has but, ADD. But, that's what but I was saying. like, I would never give her medicine for that. I'm just right. gonna let her be. It, and and that, then you get now you're 18. You don't grad. Now you're an, an adult. Now they take you off the medication. Now I'm really fucked up. No, but that's for a lot of boys are given that, especially African American boys who go to these private schools because they're so aggressive. And the white teachers don't know what is going on, so they say we have to pull them back. And you, as a parent, have to say no. I've got that. I'm not going to. Because the first thing they tell you, if you ask any black parent, first thing they do with your boy is say he needs to get tested. Because they'll say evidently something's wrong with his hearing. Because I call him three or four times and he doesn't answer. That's because the kid's daydreaming. It's because he's boring. ignoring you. No. See, <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. No, because the kid is daydreaming because, one, he's either bored because he's too smart for the class and he's figured it out. So what these white teachers don't understand, because an African-American teacher will say, come here, or a teacher of color will say, come here. What's going on with you? And he'll realize, he'll say, did you eat breakfast? No, well, that's what's wrong with you. Where a white kid teacher will expect that, but I can't believe he didn't eat breakfast. That's the difference. And that's a great point. We're going to go to Chicago. Kim from Chicago. What's up, Kim? What's up, Foxhole? What's up, love? How you doing? I'm doing all right. You sound um, fine. I, I, just, I just wanted to comment on the, on the bullying thing. I think um, the last person who touched on the, the teacher aspect of it, that's a real big part of it, too. I think you have a lot of teachers out here that are just not equipped to deal with kids and attitudes and different things that's going on. Um, just because I don't really think that laws are going to fix that. You know, this, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to have kids making kid mistakes and then they're paying the price for that's it. That's what I'm saying. Laws, and that's not, that's not right. I think a lot of the, every time, you know, everybody that was asked about it, even within your own circle, everybody said, well, as a parent, I would do this. As a parent, I, I would do that. You can't continue to discipline children who have parent involvement for people that don't have parent involvement. Start focusing on the people that don't have parent involvement. I, I kind of feel when you said that uh, your daughter, um, you would ask your daughter, what did you, did you tell the teacher? And then if they said, you know, if it happens again, okay, and you hit them back and then the incident occurs, then you deal with it like that. But then now if you have laws, you have a kid, a first grader hitting another first grader, and then what, you're missing weeks of school and instruction because of a law? I don't yeah, really but, agree with but that. But no, here's the thing. See, you say that, but if that kid hits my kid and, and, and takes his eye out, and now my kid only has one eye, are you kidding me? That's why well, I don't want to hit it. Let's not go to the extreme. Well, no, that is the extreme, child, Johnny Mac. No, no, no. How are you going to say that? The average child in the first grade is not going to punch you and knock oh, your Oh, come eye on, out. Johnny Mac. An yeah. average kid in the first grade will take a pencil, will stick a kid in the eye. Are you kidding me? Will take a ruler. Never, that I've was just that. you in the no, first no, grade. No, no, no. My daughter stabbed somebody in the ear. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so yes, at three years old, your daughter stabbed somebody in the ear. But here's my thing. I like what Kim said. Now we have adults intervene, uh, 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 intervening with normal children behavior. Children, you know, like, I, like I've seen your daughter, uh, somebody, the, she was playing with another little girl, and your daughter took the sandwich and took a bite out of it. And then the other girl made her start crying. It's... It, I saw it. I saw her daughter take a bite of another girl's <laughs> She's sandwich. She's just like me. She took a bite of a sandwich. I don't think the parents, now the other little baby was crying. You know what I'm saying? I can't think of the little girl's name. She was crying. It's not for, for Zena to come in like, did you take my? No, it's just a bite of the sandwich. Get over it. It's just a little simple thing, kids.